This video is brought to you by Yellow Jacket. 66 years of expertise built into every tool. We have a York Diamond 80 furnace, not heating. Look at this gas pipe job. Flex. Coupling. With two more flex connectors. That's crazy. I'm gonna see if she'll let me fix that. I have to quote her a price to fix it. a few minutes ago I was down there at the thermostat before I could climb up uh, I heard the burners cutting on and off like it was acting like a flame sensor so I'm going to I'm going to pull this tube so that way the blower can cool down the heat exchanger for a minute we'll check the micro amps on that flame sensor because when I turned the thermostat on, I heard the burners kick on twice. Well, kick on and kick off, kick on, kick off. And then I pulled the power right here so it wouldn't go in the lockout. Look, that's another thing, look at this, see? This furnace has a pigtail that plugs in, well, she's got a damn surge protector. Her alarm box is plugged in and looks like some cable. But back in Alexandria when I had my own company, this, they, didn't, they didn't allow this in Alexandria. This wasn't code. But here it is code. So. Pull that. Put that back on. Okay, let me set up my meter to check the microamps. All right, I've got my meter set up to test microamps. My boss doesn't like to clean them. He likes to replace them. We stock every kind of flame sensor that you can imagine on our trucks. So we're going to replace this flame sensor. swap that out okay let's see what we got 
source one. That's York right there. Oh, that's the curved one. Source one. That's York. That looks like it to me. This is our good one right here. Tell you what, doesn't look bad, but we'll go with it. Let's see if that makes a difference. The other one didn't look bad, but you know, that doesn't mean anything. Instead of pulling a 0 0.4, 0 0.5, I mean, at one time I was pulling a 0 0.2, now we're pulling 2.2, 2.3 microamps. So that, that other flame sensor was bad. And I mean, it didn't even really need to be cleaned. I mean, I could have, I laid them side by side. I don't know if y'all got a good shot of it, but I mean, I was even like, wow, this the, the, doesn't look like there's anything wrong. But like I said, too. Just because it doesn't look bad doesn't mean anything. That's why you test it. Because that's that tells the story right there. All right. Well, that was easy. Easy enough. Got an inspection plate right there. That way I can get a look at the heat exchanger. I don't think I think the heat exchanger is fine, but we'll take a look at it. All right, guys, she's still burning. I've been sitting with her for a while. And a lot of people uh, compliment here about my light. Some people have, think it's the, uh, the Harbor Freight light, but it's not. This is the, the Big Larry. Uh, most of you probably know the Little Larry. This came from the supply house. So mo all the supply houses around here have them. You can get them in camo, blue, red, green, all kind of stuff. But anyway, it does uh, bright. A little dimmer and then the red caution flashlight. One other thing I want to compliment on this job is you see that the uh, furnace is sitting flat on the deck. Somebody got away with that one. Uh, of course, this is this is an older furnace. I, I remember when Dad was installing these, and this was back in the mid '90s, late '90s, when when the, the York Diamond '80s were popular. This is when York was good stuff. My dad's got a many of these out there that are still running. This one's still running fine. Heat exchanger looks great. Uh, went through there, just took a look at it. I didn't see anything. Um, but yeah, sitting flat on the deck like that is a no-no, but somebody got away with this one. Because that would not fly. Probably wouldn't have, wouldn't have flown back then either, but they probably didn't pull an inspection because this wouldn't have went through either. Oh, and by the way, she's not going to let me fix it. She said, well, she's a little old lady, and she's like, it's been like that for years, honey. I think I'm just going to leave it alone. And I let her know the dangers of it, but I'm going to maybe at least try to get a piece of rubber text off the truck and surround that, that gas line so that way it doesn't rub a hole in that flex. All right, well, this is definitely not the way I wanted to fix it, but since she doesn't want to spend the money for me to repipe it, but see, the flex is fine. I was just going to repipe it from the gas valve out, you know, to outside of the cabinet and then, you know, to right here where I could reach my flex. But, you know, we, we got to charge for labor and gas pipe and she don't want to spend the money. So the least I could do is take a piece of rubber tex. Stuff, one on the back, one on the front, to 
where that flex line doesn't rub a hole in the cabinet. And you can even see it down here. That's the least I can do for her. Because there has been reports of these flex lines rubbing against these furnace cabinets and exploding. Or, you know, puncturing them. So, you may not like that. I mean, you know, I, I, I can't, you know, I can't do it for free. So, at least I did that to, to make, you know, to try to get it to not rub a hole. That makes me feel a little better. All right, guys, this one's up and running. I'm done. Thank y'all for watching. We'll see y'all on the next one.